So today I want to talk to you about fibrous dysplasia. And basically it is dys, which is not normal, plasia, which is growth of fibrous tissue. So fibrous tissue is replacing your normal bone. And so when you have a normal bone for us in neuro-ophthalmology, we're usually thinking about the skull. So in the skull base, what we're worried about for fibrous dysplasia is the vision. And so the optic nerve is just medial to the anterior clinoid and then goes to the, to the orbit. And so when we have fibrous dysplasia involving the sphenoid bone or the skull base, it can affect the optic canal, which is cranial nerve two. So this is the main way fibrous dysplasia comes to me. However, because the orbit also includes the muscles and the optic nerve in the orbital portion, maxillary fibrous dysplasia, or any paraorbital fibrous dysplasia can cause ophthalmoplegia, proptosis, and diplopia, and the loss of vision. So we've got the orbit version, and we've got the intracranial versions of fibrous dysplasia. It comes to me as double vision or orbital symptoms and signs, proptosis, ophthalmoplegia, optic neuropathy, or the intracranial version if it's close to the canal. So the anterior skull base is the fibrous dysplasia that we see in neuroph. There's two forms, a monoostotic form, which means only one bone, or a polyostotic form, which means more than one bone. And sometimes you have polyostotic as part of a syndrome, the syndromic variety. And the syndrome that we're worried about is called the McCune-Albright syndrome. The McCune-Albright syndrome is associated with polyostotic fibrous dysplasia and endocrinopathy. The endocrinopathy is too much hormones and the too much is could be hyperthyroid or Cushing's or too much growth hormone. Um, it's basically a hormone excess thing. In addition, they can have cafe au lait spots just like in neurofibromatosis type one, but the cafe au lait spots in McCune-Albright are often described as coast of Maine because they're very uh, strange border uh, an extensive cafe au lait, so it's like a big cafe au lait spot with a squiggly line border, just like the little coast of Maine islands of the state of Maine. So it's like a state of Maine cafe au lait spot. And so you need to know about fibrous dysplasia. It is dysplastic, not neoplastic. It can affect the skull base. When it's anteriorly, it can produce orbital signs or optic neuropathy. It can be monoostotic, polyostotic, or syndromic. If it's syndromic, the syndrome is called the McCune-Albright. That's associated with cutaneous manifestations, coast of Maine, cafe au lait spot, and also the endocrinopathy, excess states. And normally, this is a kid thing. Uh, the average age is like 10 to 20. So it's rare to see this when you're older without having had a CAT scan at some point. Most of the patients are asymptomatic. In the long bones, it can cause pain. That's orthopedic surgery is gonna see that. When it comes in the skull base, it comes to us as double vision or loss of vision. There's no real treatment. It's not hereditary, but it is uh, genetic. And the reason it's that is because it's a post-zygotic phenomenon. So the zygote is already formed and usually it's from mosaicism. So you've heard that term probably in other videos where not every cell in your body is the same genetically. And that can occur from heteroplasmy, from mosaicism related to the X chromosome, or in a post-zygotic fashion, mosaicism can cause chromosomal abnormalities, usually from disjunction or anaphase lag, where the the little spindle breaks and one cell gets all the chromosome and the other cell doesn't get all of it or half of it or none of it. And that causes a post-zygotic problem 
in the control mechanisms in the bone that leads to the formation of fibrous tissue in the wrong place, and we call that fibrous dysplasia. There's no cure. Uh, there's some treatments, bisphosphonates, sometimes used to control the phosphate metabolic error in bone pain, but from the, from the neurop standpoint, really don't have good treatments. You could decompress it. It can undergo cystic degeneration and cause a mass lesion, and rarely, less than 1%, fibrous dysplasia, which is normally benign, can undergo malignant transformation. So you need to know a little bit about fibrous dysplasia, especially when it's near the canal or the orbit.